All right, everybody, this is Nash here, and I've been really inconsistent with videos. Going to hopefully get this settled out. Uh, Dad should be arriving back from the hospital on Wednesday, and hopefully this is done for the rest of football season. So after that happens, should be having videos pumping out every single day. Uh, this this one was really late, having to run back and forth. It is what it is. But it's officially OU Sucks Week. It is Monday. I know OU Sucks Week kind of started last week since we both had buys, but the hate really, really starts today. And – if you like that, drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and then comment down below your thoughts on how terrible this Oklahoma offense is. Because I'm here to tell you it's terrible. It, it's just it's just flat out bad. And Oklahoma fans can say, look, this is just Nash trolling. You can write it off as a Texas fan trolling and, you know, talking smack. But really, this is not. This is honestly kind of almost me pleading with Oklahoma fans and the Oklahoma team. Like, I would like better games. Uh, I got my uh, thing right here from 2018, the Cotton Bowl. That game, I saw that game. I also saw 2022. The 2018 game is better, in my opinion. It was a closer match throughout the game. It wasn't a total blowout. I just, look, I enjoy my blowouts. I do. I'm going to enjoy it. I'm going to talk smack after a blowout. It is what it is, right? I'm going to enjoy it. But those close games that are just instant classics, those will never be beat. And I would prefer for Oklahoma to have that level of team where we can go in and say, you know what, this is going to be an instant classic game. Leave the stadium going, man, this is an instant classic. That's not going to happen this year. Because Oklahoma fans, y'all need to be real with yourselves. If you're, if you're watching this video right now and you're angrily typing below, you need to be dead honest with yourselves. Is this an Oklahoma offense that is – representative of Oklahoma, wearing the wearing the name Oklahoma on the chest with crimson and cream. Is this offense representative of that? Is this the Sam Brad is this an offense that's able to that you'd be comfortable in putting up next to Sam Bradford? Is this an offense that you'd be comfortable putting up next to the Kyler Murray years? The Baker Mayfield years? Go on down the list. Y'all are a prideful school when it comes to having good offense. So I don't want to hear or see any Oklahoma fans arguing on, on behalf of, on like, for their sake. For your own sake, I don't want to see you arguing that this is a good offense. Be real with yourself. You can come out here and say, hey, look, defense is good. Y'all have a solid defense, right? You can say all these things. If there's one comment saying that, look, you're just full of crap, you're full of cap, this offense is great. You need serious, serious help if you believe that. Because this offense is absolute trash. And what? let's go on. My grandpa hates when I go and show all the numbers like this. So I'm going to try and uh, real quick uh, just go ahead and show you. Yeah, this will kind of like magnify it in on what I'm talking about. The exact, the, the, the exact one that I'm talking about right here. Okay. Points per game, 28.6. Now, I want to talk about that just for a second because it's a little bit better than the other numbers that you're seeing. 69 is a hell of a lot better than 121, 124, 130. It's actually half. Um, that what's happening right there is you're seeing the defense, Oklahoma defense, which doesn't look bad. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like, solid defense, right? I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and talk smack about an Oklahoma, Oklahoma defense that's good. But the offense is putrid, terrible, like bottom of the barrel level bad, okay? And you're talking about the 121st ranked offense yards per game. I didn't finish the points per game thing. The, the defense is helping them out with turnovers, giving them, giving them the ball in short field. We'll, we'll touch on this in just a second here. But yards per game, 121st ranked offense in yards per game, 297.8 yards. Texas is almost... Not almost. I mean, we're allowing less yards than that per game on the defensive side. And that's that's the other thing. It's not like y'all are some bottom five, bottom ten level defense or offense going up against some mediocre level defense. This is the this is an elite Texas defense. This might this is most likely the best defense I have ever seen in my years on existence on this earth. And we're over twenty five plus years. So I mean Look, it's just you need to be need to be worried about this stuff, right? Yards per play, 4.7, 124th in the nation. 
Third down conversion, 26.9, 130. Explosive play, 130. Now, I would say that this is Army, Navy, and Air Force level stuff, but we're going to touch on that here in a second. You might have already seen it. You might be noticing what I'm about to say. There's no way on earth Army, Navy, or Air Force is going to have this bad of rushing. Like, they're, they're not. They're not going to have this bad of rushing. They're going to have decent rushing numbers. Their passing, their passing is straight out of an Army, Navy, or Air Force statistics. If you look at how bad they are passing the football, Oklahoma is equally as bad. You're seeing 120th in the yards per pass, that 6.0 yards per pass. Texas is number one, allowing 4.5 yards per pass. Pass yards per game. 118th in the nation, only 169.2 yards per pass. Only eight 20-plus yard pass plays all season long. That's 126th in the nation. And then the rushing, you're like, okay, well, maybe they got a good rushing team. No, they don't. 101st in the nation, 3.7. Rushing yards per game, 100th in the nation, 128.6. This is a horrible offense so where is the bad offense coming from because you'll see in a second i don't think it's the quarterbacks i actually don't think that there's much i I don't think that there's much oklahoma can do at this point it's too late you you, you've hired the wrong guy you don't have the i I honestly don't even think it's necessarily a signal call issue um you look at this offensive line is just horrible offensive line yards per off offensive line yards okay the line yards on the offense is a good measure for how good your offensive line is, which is kind of an eye-opening statistic to see Georgia and Alabama so low on the line yards, which is the x-axis. The po- the top, the y-axis, that's going to be your offensive power success. Oklahoma is by far the worst team in the SEC when it comes to both of the metrics combined. Or even if you wanted to look at any one of these metrics singly, which these are huge metrics when it comes to being able to sustain drives, which we're touching on right now. On offensive power success, if you want to get a third, if you want to get a third and short, fourth and short, that's where that's going to come into play. They're they're only successful less than 60% of the time running offensive power, running power plays. Offensive line yards. They are barely above 2.6. What that means is that's uh, – here, actually, let me just read from the – and so there's the definition of line yards right now. Line yards attempts to measure the number of running yards which are attributed to the offensive line. Yards are weighted as falls. Losses is 120% on offensive line. So if you lose four yards, they're calculating 120% of that, and you're going to get five yards lost on that one. That's what it, you lost for. But 120%, they're going to credit you with five yards loss. Zero to four yards from the line of scrimmage, you're getting 100% of the credit from those. Five to 10 yards down the line of scrimmage, you're getting 50% of credit. 11 plus yards, 0% because that's main. Once you get to that territory, you're now talking about the running back having more effect than the offensive line. Offensive line isn't running 10 yards down the field three, three seconds after the snap, right? This is used to see how well an offensive line is blocking for the run. Somebody that we got to watch out for. Al- A&M. I almost said Alabama. Alabama. Well, at, we do got to watch out for that. Alabama and Georgia. But A&M. A&M is looking like they have a def- decent offensive line. Now, this also, I think this also goes to show Texas has uh, had an amazing pass blocking offensive line. But run blocking it hasn't been there. And people got mad at us. for se- They got mad at me for pointing out last year. It really had. It, it really was. It never took a dip. It never took a dive down or a dip down after B. John Robinson left. B. John Robinson was just a really, really, really good running back for the University of Texas, and he made a lot of plays that weren't blocked for, at, you know, what they should be. He made them far look look far better. Now I mentioned an inability to sustain drives and. We're going to talk about this. I, I covered this a little bit in my article that I put on Twitter earlier. Uh, I'm going to have my articles popping up somewhere soon. Keep an eye on that. Uh, here you go. And, and go but go check out this article on Twitter right here. 
they don't sustain drives well. 32 of their 65 offensive drives this year have been, which is 49.2%, have ended on downs or straight straight up punted. That's not even that's not counting uh, interception or any other or fumble or any turnovers like that. Those are specifically turnovers on downs, and then uh, also uh, just punting the football, which is kind of a turnover. They're just two similar turnovers, in my opinion. Now, this is what I'm saying. <laughs> Look, hey, I wasn't lying. That it's basically the same offense, or it got a little bit worse when you because what is? L- let me ask you this: What's the goal of quarterback? What's the goal of quarterback? To move the offense down the field and score, which is one of the reasons why calling a guy a game manager is one of the stupidest insults you could ever give a quarterback. Okay, congratulations. You've just given him a, a huge compliment. Or it should, to any real football player, that should be a huge co- – like, I understand you're trying to take a shot at the athleticism of the guy, but, look – if Quinn Ewers is leading our offense and we're scoring on 70 percent of the drives, I don't, I could, I couldn't care less if he's throwing the ball underneath his legs or if he's doing a granny toss. I really don't give a shit. We're scoring. That's all that matters. So, how does that check out with Michael Hawkins Jr. and Jackson Arnold? Well, when you look at their scoring, Jackson Arnold scores on thirty four, thirty five point four percent of his drives. Michael Hawkins is scoring on 35.3% of his drives. It's the same offense. It's the same dude. And if you look at it, both quarterbacks averaging five plays. Like, so their average drive is going to be five plays. And the amount of times that Jackson Arnold has had his drive go for five plays or more is 20 out of 48 drives. That's going to get you a good 41.7%. Well, Michael Hawkins Jr. in the same statistical category that's 35.3 percent and then you also go down well his play the drives that ended in a punt or a turnover for michael hawkins jr you're talking about 11 out of 17 drives that's 64.7 percent compared to jackson arnold you only had him you only had turnover and this is where the turnovers kind of change things because jackson arnold did turn the ball over more I mean, Michael Hawkins Jr. hasn't really done that much, much if at all, yet. Um, you're talking about 67.4% compared to 43.8%. And that's where I say that there's there's a chance. Like, if you look at just the per drive, the drive-by-drive basis of numbers and play, how, the, how they operate, Jackson Arnold might be better. Now, you look at this right here. I mean, oh, well, I, I shouldn't have made it big. Uh, but you look at this graph right here, right? Obviously, just like this is, this is Temple. This is Temple is what that is. And then it starts to drop down Houston, Tulane, all that stuff. And then, boom. They're pretty much the same quarterback. And and for fans that want to go, well, look, 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 see, it's right there. It's right there, Nash. It's right there. You see Michael Hawkins Jr. is going up. And, and Arnold going down. Well, let me let me ask you this. His last drop back is higher than... Oh! Oh, so he was higher than... Okay, yeah. And what this is, is this, per, this is predicted points added per play on a per play basis. Obviously, this is per drop back. So, versus Tennessee in the same game, Jackson Arnold has a higher predicted points added. So, I don't want to hear any... Oh well, Michael Hawkins Jr. is up higher now. Well, I, I think he's. I think Jackson Arnold's numbers would have gone up if he was playing Auburn too, right? Your it's, your predicted points are going to go up a little bit. So, a little sidebar on that thing right there. But to go on to comparing the, you might have seen the chart in the in the article, but comparing the two quarterbacks. Let's just get into that real quick. And so this is how the how each quarterback. Or, how the offense is affected by each quarterback. That should be a, that is a good way to say this. For example, when Jackson Arnold is leading the football team, they are scoring 26.8 points per game on average. And how I did the Tennessee game was I did six points for, ten, for Jackson Arnold. They scored three points under his uh, leadership, basically one half. There was one drive that wasn't him. I just said, you know what? Screw it. 
just multiplying whatever happened in, for him and whatever happened with the offense under him in the first half versus the second half. Now, fans that want to say, well, you can't do that, man. Well, we did worse. No, you actually didn't. You actually uh, you had less yardage. Uh, you did have more points with Michael Hawkins, but you had less yardage. You had less yards per play, I believe. Uh, third down conversion was worse. It, it's just it. <laughs> but I doubled I doubled each of their stats from uh, the Tennessee game so to act like they played one full game, right? So twenty six point eight points per game, eighty sixth in the nation with Jackson Arnold, ninety second in the nation with Michael Hawkins Jr. with the twenty five point five points per game, yards per game. Jackson Arnold is averaging the OU offense more with 314.4 yards per game. Still not good, but it's better than 131st in the nation. There's 134 teams in the nation right now, let me remind you. So that means there are, with Michael Hawkins Jr. Average, you know, as your quarterback, there are only three teams in college football that are averaging a worse yards per play. And just for you know the fun of it right now, let me uh, go ahead and give that to you. Uh, not scoring offense. I want total offense. Uh, yards per game. Yards per game. Okay. You're talking about Kent State, Wyoming, and Kennesaw State. Congratulations. That's <laughs> Congratulations, Oklahoma fans. Y'all, y'all got a great offense now. Okay. Third down conversion. Both putrid. I mean, with Jackson Arnold, you're dead last in the nation. <laughs> with Michael Hawkins Jr., it doesn't get that much better. And that's kind of one of the things that I'm saying is, like, the scoring doesn't affect that, doesn't get affected on a drive-by-drive basis. The third down doesn't really get affected on a drive-by-drive basis. Is this even a quarterback issue? Or is this just a straight-up horrible offensive coordinator, horrible offensive game-planning issue? You heard Joe Clatt just absolutely just rip to shreds the Oklahoma offense after the Tennessee game, saying that was one of the worst, if not the worst, pieces of game film that he's ever watched. And I think they even had a statistic because it goes to the offensive line. The running backs were averaging, at the, at the point that they said this statistic, they were saying that running backs were averaging 0.0 yards per carry before being touched. But they had been tu- they had been contacted behind the line of scrimmage like, it was like 16 of 23 or something like that. Rushes, they had been contacted behind the line of scrimmage before they could even get to the line of scrimmage. And that's a problem. That's a massive problem. You go and you look at this chart, and what this is showing is this is showing kind of a similar story except for predicted points added per play. Is it's it, is it really like a, is it a tried and true like hey yeah yeah I'm a stamp on this stat no but it's something to look at and it's something to consider. There is only one running back on this roster that has a positive predicted points added per play. So that means per play, Gavin Sawchuck, Javante Barnes, Sam Franklin, when they touch the ball, when they get used the predicted points added on the game goes backwards. Yes, that is correct. Okay? Backwards. Now, this is this is where it really... Look at the passing yards again. Look at the passing numbers again. And again, I mean, look, y'all got a, y'all got a decent defense. I'm not here to rip up the defense. Okay? But look at the passing offense. Look at the total offense, and then consider the fact that y'all's rushing offense is not doing anything. This is an offensive line issue. This is a coaching issue. I don't know how much a quarterback is going to save it. Y'all definitely threw Jackson Arnold underneath the y'all. Y'all toss him under the bus. Y'all are going to find that out in a couple of years when he has some interview, when he's you know on a backup as a he actually might still be a decent quarterback down the road. He needs a quarterback coach. He needs a good offensive coach. Brent Venables is not an offensive coach, and it's clearly showing. So, you know, he, look, chalk, toss out your, toss out Jeff Levy, toss out Don Gabriel, and you can say you didn't. He brought that stuff up un, you know, 
I was going to say, um, on whatever, but on his own. Wasn't even mentioned. And he brought up the Dylan Gabriel and Jeff Levy note. That tells you that that was, a, that was on his mind. He knew it. And he was trying to quell a rumor. Well, or not not even rumor, more of a, more or less just public perception. I sat on John So Ball's uh, Locked on Longhorn. Go check that out. Uh, it's... This is this felt like a lot like Tom Herman when Tom Herman was trying. There was there was something going on in the message boards, and Tom Herman comes out and says, and he answers this question. He's like he's like hold on on where I just want to say one thing real quick, and he brings up something that wasn't even mentioned in the interview, and it was on the message boards. That just it was very very similar to how Dil, uh, they uh, Venables went about the Dylan Gabriel and Jeff Levy whole ordeal. Because right now it appears that Jeff Levy was kicked out and Dylan Gabriel was kicked out to, you know, kind of take the fall for the bad offense last year. Bad offense. Offense was far better than it is this year. And really, the games that y'all lost were on the defense. But now, instead of the defense, you know, taking the fall last year, and y'all have a good offense, y'all have a good quarterback, you have a good offense coordinator, now y'all got shit. Enjoy. Hook em. <laughs>